Be sure to try out the OSNAP exercise before watching this video. But if you have some difficulty, watch this and I'll show you how to do all these exercises. In this video I'll start from the bottom up and then first I'll show you how to use running object snaps. So to turn on running object snaps, you click on OSNAP on the bottom of your screen. Because I didn't have any OSNAPs selected, it popped up with the drafting settings window. If you already have object snaps selected for running object snaps, that when I turn it on it will just toggle and I won't get the window. However, if I want to change which OSNAPs are running, I'll right click on OSNAPs and go to settings. In the resulting dialog box, I can choose which object snaps I want to show up. I'm just going to do the bottom two exercises, so I'll turn on endpoint, midpoint, and center and hit OK. Let's start with this exercise. I need to draw a line from the end of this arc to the midpoint of the arc. I'll type L, and as I hover over the end of the arc, I'll get a green object snap for the endpoint. Now as long as that object snap is showing, if I click, my line will start at that point. If I move towards the center of the arc, I'll see a green circle which represents the center object snap, and I'll click there, and then I'll move on to the other endpoint. I'll start a new line command. This time I'll go from the center, or the end point of one of the lines I just drew, to the midpoint of the arc. This bottom exercise is going to call into use a really important one-time object snap. So to start out, I'll begin a line command and I'll go to the end point on the top inside of one of these vertical bars. Now to put a point in between these two, I need to use an, a one-time object snap called mid between two points. You can't set it as a running object snap. So to do that, I'll type M2P and press enter. You see in my command line it says first point of mid. So I'll choose this point. And then for my second point of mid, I'll choose this point, And it'll automatically snap to the point in between the two points I just chose. And I'll just finish off using my endo snap on the top right. And moving up, I'll begin to use one time object snaps just so you can see how they work. There's a couple ways to access them. I'll turn off my running object snaps. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy this circle. So I'll select the circle, type CO for copy. For my base point, I'm actually going to want to use center because I want to grab this circle by the center. So to run that one-time object snap, I'll type CEN and choose the center of my circle. I want to copy it to this end point. I can see from the exercise in the book. So I'll type END to get my end point O-snap. I want to put it on the midpoint of the line, so I'll type MID for midpoint and go to that snap. And the last one is just on the line, so I'll type NEA, which stands for nearest. And as you can see, the object snap runs along the entire line. So I'll just pick a point towards the end here and click. There's a couple tricky nuances to this one. So I'll type L. And I want to use an endo snap on the left side of this upper line. But I want to draw this line straight down or in other words, perpendicular to the bottom line. So I'll type PER to get the perpendicular one-time snap. And you'll see it come up on the bottom line. Now as long as that green thing is showing, if I click, it'll use that object snap. Run the line command again. Start at the right end of the bottom line. This time I want to go perpendicular to the short line, even though it's not going to touch it. I'll type PER and I'll move over. You'll notice it's actually going to snap to where the green marker is. So if I come to the end of the line, it's going to connect the line right there, and I don't want that. But if I move over to the left a little bit, you'll see that my green marker moves out to the right. And so if I click here, I'm going to get the perpendicular to that point. So I'll do that. And then finally, I want to go perpendicular to the arc. PER.
For this exercise, I want to use the intersection and the node object snaps. Node is needed because this little x is not actually two lines, it's a point. So endpoint or midpoint won't work on it. I'll start the line command. And I'll start out with the node, so NOD will get me a node, which is for snapping to points. And I'll select this x. Then I'll choose INT for intersection. And the way intersection works is I just select one of the objects anywhere along it. And then as I hover over my second object, you'll see that the green marker shows up where those two objects would intersect. So I'll click again, and that one's done. Start the line command, use QUA for quadrant. Start on the left, INT for the intersection of these two circles and QUA again to get the right quadrant of the right circle. Then just a couple INTs to do this vertical line. And another way to access these one-time object snaps besides typing them in is to hold shift on the keyboard and right click. So I'll do that this time. Begin the line command, hold shift and right click your mouse and choose your one-time object snap. I want to use quadrant and then choose my point. Shift right click again to choose quadrant. Both of these exercises are just going to use the tangent command. So I'll start line, shift right click, tangent. If some of your shapes look a little bit choppy, you'll remember that we had a regen command, which you learned earlier in the book. So if I type RE for regen, my circles will become more round. And I'll finish out this top one using tangent. So when you're actually using object snaps for production, you'll probably use some running object snaps such as midpoint, endpoint, and maybe center. And for the object snaps you use less often, such as perpendicular, you'll just run a one-time object snap.